Hi, I'm Peter Monaco, CEO of The Rebel's Den, and I have with me Adam from Adam and the Hellcats out of Bristol, United Kingdom. Hi. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's so, it's, thank you for having me on. It's an honor. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, you were commenting on my, my events posts on social media, promoting your event, and I want to talk about that a little. It's a perfect night, a band night. It's a fundraiser for people with disability. And uh, I was like, yeah, and you're yes. like, you should come. And I'm like, I'm in the US, but then I mentioned <laughs> my son, right? And you're like, oh, that's interesting. Hey, can we jump on? <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, so tell me about you and your work. And you, like, because we just talked briefly right before. So yeah, I would have an um, understanding. And I want to talk about the disability um, a little bit because I think it's important that we bring awareness to that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, okay, well, I have Asperger's syndrome. I'm just going to come straight out with it. Um, Love it. Obviously, as anyone that has it or knows someone with it would know, it does bring some difficulties to my life, but it also, frankly, I wouldn't be the person I am if it wasn't. Uh, my kind of story as far as becoming who I am now with the music, uh, um, basically, I. I got diagnosed with Asperger's. So I was about nine years old at the time. Okay. And I'd find certain little obsessions, you know what I mean? Um, in, some of them were a bit dumb, to be honest. But then um, I was 11 and my dad played me a song in the car called Rocking All Over the World by Status Quo, actually. Um, nice. Yeah, I, I know. They're a good start of band, <laughs> aren't they? Um, and I loved it so much that the following week I went to see him and he's got an entire live album on in the car and I'm going well I'm, I'm head banging in the car you know what I mean yeah yeah and I, I've become utterly obsessed within a couple of weeks with these guys and um suddenly I've I've been round at my dad's again and he's pulled out two tickets to Warwick Castle uh Status quo we used to do a tour every year where they would go around big landmarks like castles and stuff in the UK. Yes, we have a lot of those. Um, I know Germany has and, uh, too, so I know. <laughs> yeah, they they, uh, they would play a big show in the nearest big field to said castle. And honestly, I was I was scared, frankly, when I got there. Um, I was I was a lot shorter than I am now, and I've taken <laughs> one look at this PA stack and I've gone, that thing's gonna eat me. I, I literally <laughs> thought the thing was going to eat me. But then um, the, a weird moment happened. Uh, the late, great Sir Rick Parfit, the man deserves a knighthood. Um, <laughs> and even, even after his death, he deserves it. He stepped out on stage into the spotlight with a beautiful white Fender Telecaster, the long flowing hair, and he hit the first chords of Caroline. And... It was the most exhilarating thing I'd ever seen in my fucking life. Um, what followed was me going absolutely insane for two hours. Within about two months, my dad's dragged me to see Motorhead. Um, then over the years since then, it's the Motorhead, Staxon, Black Sabbath, the Rolling Stones. Yeah. You name me and him have gone to see them. That's awesome. And now uh, my dad is actually the drummer in Adam and the Hellcats. As, That's yeah, fantastic. I didn't tell you that. No, you <laughs> didn't. I was like, I want, like, I was listening, going, I want to hug your dad. <laughs> Be because oh, yeah. hey, hey, hey. he's Here's a teddy bear, and everyone wants to. <laughs> I've taken my um, kids to concerts since they were little. Like literally, I have done that, and I'm a mom of three, so I've taken, except for my youngest, who can't, who's literally the opposite of that. He can't handle the crowds. Oh uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. That's why he's struggling. He can't handle the crowds. It's too much. It's too overwhelming. And for me, like, I need loud music to function half the time. Like, turn that mess <laughs> up because I'm like, oh, God, I have sensory overload. So nice, <laughs> nice. I get you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But, um, yeah, I, I bugged him, okay, till I, till I was about, oh, must have been 14, 15, uh, until he bought me my first guitar. And then I started playing every instrument you could 
possibly <laughs> imagine you could play rock and roll on. Uh, got into my first band around 15, a thing called The Adequates. I've got to be honest, we were rather inadequate. but <laughs> um, I, I was the drummer in that. I've been through a ton of bands over the years. Then uh, about six years ago, I, I decided to go my own way. That was when the first incarnation of Adam and the Hellcats happened. And to cut a long story really short, certain things went wrong. I decided to back burner it for a while. I went off and did some other bands. And then a, a situation that really it doesn't need to be fully spoken about here happened. But long story short, I decided that, frankly, I was better off just doing it my own way. Eh? And I've uh, thankfully, I found some people who shared that vision uh, it, it's not like, say, when you go to see Alice Cooper, where as, as great as his musicians are, they're a backing band for him. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, with my guys, it might be my name on the ticket, okay, but that's just where I do the work so they don't have to. They just turn up and have some fun, and, <laughs> yeah. and, they, and they love it. Um, the band, uh, as it stands currently, is a six-piece uh, Myself on lead guitar and vocals. Uh, we have my friend Mark Perry on the bass. Ace, um, Cameron Kirby on uh, rhythm and sometimes lead guitar. I'm trying to make him play a bit more lead, but <laughs> uh, he, he, he won't have it half the time, to be honest. It's, I love you, dude. Ooh, don't hate me. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, uh, Roxanne Williams and Kaiwen Farron on the backing vocals. Absolutely beautiful voices, which basically they make me sound a lot better, to be honest. So <laughs> oh, I can't really complain. Well, I, I will tell you, I, I told you I'd check you out before we jumped on, like while I was stuffing my face because <laughs> I had to eat <laughs> something. And I was like, this is really good. Like, I don't even know what song I was listening to, but I was like, oh. I really like this. I mean, I'm a little, I like the heavy stuff most of the time, right? But I also like the softer stuff. And I was just like, oh, this is really good. I really yeah, like it. Dude, we I have to stop because I got to get ready to talk to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> we got some earworms on that record, I tell you. Long yeah. live rock and roll. But um, yeah, uh, as far as things these days, um, I've had my ups, I've had my downs. But um, the, when I decided to put, this incarnation of Hellcats back together, it was mainly because uh, the band that I'd just left, uh, we were booked for a festival called A Perfect Day, um, kind of leading back into the subject yeah. of disabilities and all that, really. Um, it's up near Lincoln in the UK, uh, a place called Cabon Parva, lovely estate. Too many wasps is my only complaint. <laughs> Too many wasps. I don't like them. But... Um, uh, yeah, absolutely lovely estate. Uh, the whole site, we make it completely disabled friendly. And I'm not just talking autism and stuff here. I'm talking anything that anyone could have any sort of access requirements for, we got them covered. Okay. Um, I'm probably going to tell you some funny stories from that weekend in a bit. But um, <laughs> yeah, uh, it was only our second gig as this lineup, frankly. Wow. Um, we played a warm-up show at a local pub in Bristol the night before, filled the place, don't have a clue how, but we filled hey, it. Hey, you know what, it. it was meant to be. And then uh, myself and a few of the other members, we've uh, hit the road in our former accordion player's um, camper van, actually. And uh, we've driven through the night to get to Lincoln, turned up by about seven o'clock the next morning, We've worked tirelessly all through the next day with Eileen Smale, who I've got to mention, or she's probably going to slap me. <laughs> <laughs> who uh, She was the one who originally put the whole idea of a perfect day together. I just came on board because I loved it. Um, and then the Saturday, the festival came. We were uh, third down on the bill with Hybrid Theory headlining, the UK's number one tribute to Linkin Park and the late Chester Bennington. Wow. And of course... Um, I actually had the honor of, of going on stage with them playing the part of Mike Shinoda that night. And I did a few gigs with them after that as well. Oh, it was Sweet. great fun. Um, cause contrary to popular belief, I can actually rap. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, honestly, 
the reaction to the festival and especially to our set to be honest uh was amazing i uh, i was inundated with yeah. frankly i don't want to call it fan mail because it makes me seem like i'm some something bigger than i am but <laughs> it, if if that's the way to describe it then yeah that, it, that's the way to do it thank you you made us feel so welcome yeah. uh, even parents of these younger disabled guys like who, who'd come along that it was brilliant like the first thing i said when we stepped on stage that day we uh, we went on and we opened up with a song called battle cry which uh i told you about before but i'll tell your listeners um it's a lot of invisible disabilities like Asperger's and well anything autistic spectrum for a start um they get kind of oh i don't really know the right words here shunned people pe people tell you sort yourself out there ain't nothing wrong with you when i mean yeah there's there's nothing wrong with us there's actually everything right but we're a little different and yeah. some aren't going to understand but this was a rallying cry of if someone wants to be like that with you fuck them <laughs> frankly <laughs> yeah. it, um but we finished that song and i simply walked to the mic and i said okay I have one rule. You will do whatever the hell you feel you ought to do in the crowd in front of my show. Oh, this is your time. I'm, if you want to headbang, you headbang. If you want to dance, you dance. If you want to sit there, cool, you sit there. If you want to sing, you sing. If you want to dance around doing the flaming funky chicken for all I care, <laughs> uh, okay? As long as you are having fun, and, yeah. all right? And the, the cheer I got from it was frankly it was heart melting well and as a mom with us i i say extra needs because i don't actually like the word special i call them extra because they're just a little extra right they're a little different yeah, yeah um, no no completely <laughs> understand. um it's a great way to put it i might use that as a lyric sometime <laughs> go right ahead but but that's how what i refer because he yes he is slightly different but to find activities to find places and get the support from other artists and different things i don't even know the word is really important not to me as just as a parent but for him to feel included and for yeah, anybody um, who has a disability of any kind is to just be part of something and to be included because so often there's that alone thing that happens yeah see i um i met a young lad on that day i'm I'm, I feel really bad for this i can't actually remember his name i met a lot of people that day it, he seemed very overwhelmed and uh he was almost inconsolable by his parents and the thing is i saw a copy of rep long live rock and roll sticking out of his pocket and well i'd recognize that anyway you know what i mean <laughs> and, um, so i've gone over uh, and uh, like he kind of had his head in his hands a bit at the time and i've gone up to his side and gone hey mate is is he all right and He's heard my voice. He's looked up, and you should have seen this young lad's jaw drop, honestly. And I've sat with him for just 10 minutes. I've signed his CD. I've taken some photos with him. It made his day. The next time I saw him, he was right down the front during our set going crazy. I love that. He, he, was, he was brilliant. I even, I even let him up on stage to take the final bow with me that day. That's hey, absolutely brilliant. What? <laughs> yeah uh, it, no on, honestly um i i like what you're doing with your channel to be honest because uh not enough people highlight this sort of thing no absolutely and this is definitely part of my mission and my vision is to bring awareness to that to highlight some of these things so i want to thank you for reaching out i do have a question so where uh, do you yeah, keep them keep them coming <laughs> I, i'm i'm here as long as you want me I want to know where you find your inspiration because you're also the songwriter. Like you write the yes. songs. So where do you find your inspiration for the songs? I mean, what, we know Battle Cry comes out of living with Asperger's and all that stuff. Yes. But um, you, have, you have other songs. Where did that come from? <laughs> um, well, it can vary, really. Um, oh, what's a good one to start with here? Uh, right. Uh, a fan favorite off of Long Live Rock and Roll is a song called Welcome to the Madhouse it's right uh, i don't know what you'd call it where you live but um we have some things over here called supported housing units okay, okay. and when i was 
uh, I think I was 17 at the time. I, things were not going well at home between me and my mum. Okay. It, it was getting to the point where we needed that space. You know, we have a much better relationship ever since. Um, but I made a little bit of a blunder because the only place I could get into any sort of quickly was a supported housing establishment. But you find some good ones. I, I am not bashing the entire supported housing. Yeah, let's not in- do that. <laughs> I, I, like anyone that watches that works in it, if you're good at it, cool. I respect you. I just haven't had the best experience of them. Like, um, a, there's a lot of uh, su- supposedly support workers over the years that have pretty much tried to tell me how to live my life. Mm. When th- their role is if someone's got the mental capacity to know how they want to live their life, to help them be where they want to be. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Um, and I've been kind of shoved through a lot of them really because I, I used to live in Clevedon it's a small town um about probably 40 minutes away from where I live now in Bristol uh because this is kind of the big city for the southwest okay and um yeah it, again even moving to Bristol the only thing I could get that wasn't going to take me a couple of years to sort was supported housing but I was they lump everyone no matter what your condition in together now i'm again anyone that has a a disability of any sort cool i'm i'm for you okay but i i was put into places with some people who to try not to say anything that i shouldn't say about them yeah let's be careful (laughs) they they were they were dangerous to themselves and to be honest to others as well um other things should have been done for them and Mm. I really feel for them to be honest but my own mental health started to suffer a lot um out of it and basically while writing welcome to the madhouse I pretty much took stories from other people who I'd lived with who I had gotten along with um who had been in the same boat as me for years and I just wrote that Uh, and um because sometimes it is, it is sometimes there's not a big difference between living in one of these supported housing places and actually being sectioned in a psychiatric hospital. Yeah. And I've, I, I know this from people who have been in psychiatric hospitals. Okay. Thankfully I've never ended up in one myself, but there was a time it was touch and go. Oh, yeah. to be honest, whether I was going to end up in one or not. Um, like, uh, but yeah, that's Welcome to the Madhouse. But like I said, a lot of my songs, they vary. Um, it, like there's a, another song on there called... Uh, one second, one second. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, my girlfriend's just reminded me the opening track <laughs> off the record. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, for the girlfriend. Um... Yeah, can you still hear me? Yes, sorry. it was kind of oh, breaking. Okay. Yeah, we're oh, good. sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, made in Bristol, right? When I moved to Bristol, even though I was in supported housing still for a few years, I'm in my own flat now, okay? But that is when my life started to improve, okay? Mm. Everything just got better and better. My music became better. I, I attended music college for a few years as well up here. Um, which obviously that kind of was what started the original incarnation of Adam and the Hellcats. I met all those guys at college and uh, I had these songs. They liked them. They helped me out, you know, Um, but made in Bristol. It's, it's pretty just a love letter, pretty much just a love letter to my city. Really? It, yeah. Don't get me wrong. It talks about going out and getting really fucked up quite a lot because (laughs) not being funny. We drink a lot of this. <laughs> this. <laughs> You're doing I'm from on- Frankfurt, Germany. What are you telling me? <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Um, <laughs> like there's points of the record that go a little darker. Um, yeah. Uh, Starlight, for example, is another one that touches on the mental health things. Now, 
I'll be honest, this is the first time I've talked about this in an interview. Well, you know what? I truly appreciate you being so transparent and so open about it because I, I oh. really think we need to have these conversations and to bring them to light. Uh, I, love, especially, I love chatting music. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I can, I I can tell. <laughs> I can tell. But, but here's the thing. We've lost a lot of great people. Due yeah, to definitely. House. Chester, right? of course. One of my favorite, I have yet, I can't listen to his music. I struggle <laughs> so bad to come when um, it comes on. A quick one before we carry on with about <laughs> the songs and that. Um, yeah. You remember, obviously, I said about performing with Hybrid Theory, uh, the UK's leading Linkin Park tribute band. Chris, I'm sorry, don't hate me for this. <laughs> um, basically, Chris Humphreys, uh, an absolute legend, he plays Chester in the band. Uh, my girlfriend's currently laughing because she's actually scared to look at him. He, um, do you remember Chester had flame tattoos going yeah. up his arm? Yeah. Chris went to a tattooist and got them done properly. And when he gets his gear on, okay, when he's in full gear for a show, you, you can't tell the difference. When he opens his mouth, my God, that boy scares me. Honestly, there was a few points of the show where I almost forgot my lines because I'm just there going, yeah. all right, mate, calm down. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, uh, Starlight, though. Um, Off Along Live Rock and Roll, that's a very old Hellcat song, okay? That's from the first incarnation. <laughs> <clears throat> I, in college... Uh, the first college I ever went to, when I still lived in Clevedon, uh, I got a lot of bullying. Didn't really know how to handle it. And mm. honestly, um, oh, you know what? I'm just going to be straight about this. I was getting the living crap beaten out of me in a corner wow. one day. Um, three chaps who don't quite know why they didn't like me, but I, I, I guess I just offend them by my presence. And um, yeah, all yeah. of a sudden, uh, all of a sudden, there was a size nine new rock that appeared at the balls of the ringleader from behind him. Mm. I'm not even kidding you. Uh, just a swift kick. He drops to the floor and this little ginger goth girl, her name was Holly, um, was stood behind him. She just looks at the other two and goes, right, fuck off. <laughs> off. And they ran for it. She became my best friend. Okay. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, she received a lot of bullying herself. That she she was very proud in a lot of ways. Mm. Is, may whoever rest her soul, you know what I mean. But um, she never opened up to any of us. And unfortunately, eventually she was she was found to have taken her own life. Okay. Um, and right after finding out. That it, like I was halfway through sort of writing what became the song about a different subject, but oh, wow. I but at that point the whole dynamic it of it kind of shifted, yeah. and it's probably the song that, as much as like, god damn, I hate having to play it every single time we do a gig because no one will let me not play it for a night. But, um, <laughs> uh, but it's the song that means the most to me. Uh, well, it's one of two that mean the most to me. But now I'm going to let you in on something that even our fans back here don't really know just yet. Ooh, we are currently working. We are currently working on the follow-up to Long Live Rock and Roll called Just When You Thought You Were Safe. Now, on that record, there is a song called The Ballad of Mary Jane. Now, it, it's not a ballad. Okay, it's punk as fuck. But, <laughs> um, uh, but it, it, the title sounded cool. But basically, up until uh, just short of a month ago, um, I used to believe that smoking weed really helped me. And mm. for a good few years, it probably did. Okay. Um, there came a turning point and it started to affect my mental health. Yes, there were other things that contributed to my mental health going downhill, but smoking weed as much as I did, did not help. Okay. And I didn't see it. I will fully admit I didn't see it. And now I'm nearly, well, I'll be a month clean as of Saturday. Wow. I went full on cold Turkey. Okay, it's not the way many people do it. It's a bit extreme, but 
Um, yeah, sorry, I've got to spark my cigarette to even talk about this. <laughs> it's all good. It's all but, good. Um, but yeah, Mary Jane, uh, well, obviously everyone knows that Mary Jane's a slang term for weed. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I wrote the song as if it was a cold, heartless woman called Mary Jane. You know what I mean? It, 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 it was kind of a play on the slang term, really. But yeah, that's um, that's going on the record. It's a really catchy little number. Um, frankly, we played it for the first time the other night at the Thunderbolt oh, in Bristol. Great little venue, by the way. Um, I'll send you a couple of videos at some point. But um, yeah, everyone loved it. They didn't even know the song before it. And they were by the breakdown, as soon as I went, sing it, they were all on it. That's awesome. It, That's we awesome. Write simple, catchy songs. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you also write about real life experience, which to me, as somebody who listens to music, is actually kind of important because I want to be able to relate to you. I want to relate to your music, right? So being yeah, able yeah. to write about um, the hard times, the dark times, the good times, whatever they may look, whatever that looks like. I think for our listeners in general, that's really important because we're all going to have crap days. No matter what city you live in, you're going to have a shitty day. Oh, yeah, yeah. Everyone's right? going to have a shitty so day. So you're going to have to, you, and you're going to find the song that really resonates with you to either help you cry it out or dance it out or headbang it out, whatever your thing is. It's going to help you release. Well, if you're in front of us, it'll be headbanging. I'll tell you that now. But. <laughs> but, but, but it helps you release whatever you're feeling and then be able to go, all right, that's done. It's over with. Carry on. You know what I mean? Totally. Like, that's what music to me does. In, in, in most social situations, okay, I feel as if I'm the weirdo, okay, and I don't like it. I try my best. <laughs> I'm, claiming that, <laughs> I'm claiming that title and I don't care. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. But um, it's like there are very few times where I feel even quote-unquote normal or yeah. may, even on top of the world like I'm a freaking god on like i i'm not an arrogant person okay i i'm very straight talking down to earth but when i get on stage i that's that's my little god moment you know what i mean Mm -hmm. i feel not just normal i feel in charge at that point like i could do anything there is only one other time of the year i do that and i should probably mention this because uh (laughs) they do do great work for people with disabilities um a scheme has started in the uk where if a disabled person wants to go to a festival they can apply for a free ticket for a carer now that carer can be anyone okay my dad tony who it like i said is the drummer in hellcats he usually goes as mine okay um i'll be honest with you we just split the cost of the one ticket and we're we're good but uh the main one we go to is download at donnington park Uh, okay and uh the disabled campsite there the team are just lovely okay anything you need they will sort you out anyone gives you any bother they'll have five big security going hey mate get off now wow Wow. Uh, no, not people to mess with those guys, trust yeah. me. Um, we are actually in a little email conversation about hopefully having Hellcats go and play on the disabled campsite either this year or next. Sweet. Next. Um, but I've met some of my best friends on that campsite and I may only get to see them for those five days of a year. But right. honestly, download begins on a Wednesday every year. And on the Monday of that week, I can guarantee you, I'll have about 10 text messages going, oh, you're coming on Wednesday then? And, oh, what time are you getting here? Oh, we'll be at the top. Oh, usual spot. Oh, bring the beer. beer. (laughs) But that's great community. So tell everybody about this event coming up. When is it? Where is it? Give us all the details, man. Okay, okay, here we go. So on the 23rd of February at Lincoln Drill Hall, big old theater, I'm really cacking it about playing there. It's our biggest show ever. Um, We are hosting a perfect night. Um, Now, this will be a fundraiser for the Perfect Day Festival that I mentioned before. Um, 
obviously festivals like a perfect day we don't get funding we don't get a lot of corporate investors or anything like that we'll get a few companies that want a banner on the main stage or something but there'll be small local lincoln companies do you know what i mean um so yeah uh 23rd of february lincoln drill hall oh okay it's 10 pounds a ticket um i would really encourage anyone to be honest who believes in the cause we're fighting for and likes rock and roll of course to um come along on the night we have chain of fools opening um who they played at perfect day festival kind of a four piece little folk sort of thing two acoustic okay. guitars, a couple of vocals but really catchy absolute earworm songs um a few covers in there as well really entertaining stuff um Second up, we have a nice three-piece, uh, very Queens of the Stone Age-esque, for mm. want of a better phrase, band called Finno, as in F-I-N-N-O. Definitely check them out. They are fantastic. I see a bright future for them. And, oh, oh, oh I wonder who's headlining. I wonder who's headlining. <laughs> Could it um, be Adam and the Howcats? Oh, oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> um, on that night, I, I will say this, okay? We have put together our biggest visual and audio stage show ever. We have a guest guitarist coming along so that I can get off the guitar and come down and meet the people. Oh, awesome. his, na his name is Nicholas Cocking. He plays in the best folk two-piece around here, actually, called the Brigstows, but he's also... One of, uh, just one of the best session musicians you'll ever hear. The guy makes every penny of his living out of music. It, okay, he, to be honest, and frankly, he's going to get a really big head when he sees this. So, <laughs> cocking, you've been warned. <laughs> On, frank, right. Frankly, he's everything. Like, he's everything I want to be when I um, grow up. Sort of age. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Well, okay. Grow up's a bit of a strong term for a guy like me. Come on. <laughs> um, and now, and now you got my girlfriend laughing at that as well. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, but um, <laughs> no, uh, uh, no. Basically, we've got a full-on visual show with a projector screen, um, wireless mics and stuff, so I can get out in the in the crowd. We are going to rock Lincoln Drill Hall. We will be de debuting everything off of just you, just when you thought you were safe, which starts recording only the week after. Wow. Fancy. All right. And to connect with you guys on social media, the Facebook yes. page, Adam and the Hellcats. Yes, What's just that? Adam and the Hellcats just, just on that, Facebook. Link that. Um, I will have everything. All the links will be on a blog post so people can obviously just click through that. Yeah. <laughs> you don't um, have to Google nothing. And, and can, I, can I possibly just put a little plea out to the US of A? Go for it, man. A to your people? Yeah. Um, right. Okay, guys, um, basically, playing in America is my all-time dream. I can die happy when I get to play in the States. So, if you go on Spotify and you have a look at our first little EP called Long Live Rock and Roll, and maybe even if you're a bit late to the game, you might catch it in time for just when you thought you were safe coming out, please, please, I I actually beg of you, share that shit around, okay? Find anyone you know that likes rock and roll. And if they run a venue, even better. Because if we get enough demand, we will come. And you better be ready, because we are, we are going to unleash rock and roll. All true British rock and roll upon the US of A. Fantastic. And you will not be ready for what's coming, <laughs> trust me. So well, thanks, Adam, so much for coming on here and no talking at all. It's, to me. It's been an absolute honor. And look, everyone, the, this channel is amazing, okay? Uh, <laughs> hey, Petra here is that. an absolute ambassador for people with disabilities and, and frankly, for musicians as well, <laughs> Not to be just honest. musicians, but yeah, in general, any kind of artist, so. Well, yeah, anyone creative. So I, I really, uh, I really, I absolutely implore you, support this channel. I will be, on a weekly basis, I will be watching all of her stuff. 
uh, from now on. I will be getting all my people to do so back home. And yeah, hopefully within the next couple of years, you, Petra, are going to get guest list at one of our shows in your and then, town. And then you know what? We'll do this thing live in person. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Got to be done. Got to be done. Everyone, Absolutely. all of them will be on it. All of them will be on it. I, I, you have my word Absolutely. on it. Uh, it's um, a date. Uh, I hope uh, your girlfriend don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 I'm glad I'm on headphones right now. She can't hear that. But <laughs> she just turns around and goes, it's a date. <laughs> I, I think I'm in trouble. I think I'm in trouble. <laughs> oh, she's got nothing to worry about. <laughs> I, I, I cause trouble anyway. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Me too, apparently. <laughs> yeah, but, um, yeah, no, Petra, it's been an absolute honor. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you.